Okay, Clay. This is Mission Control Houston. Welcome to today's ISS update. It is Wednesday, June 13th, 2012, and this is a live view inside the flight control room for the space station. Today, this team here is being led by Flight Director Paul Dye, who is sitting there in the middle in the blue shirt. Right beside him in the green shirt is Clay Anderson. He is uh, serving as today's Capcom. Well, the crew has been very busy today. They had uh, a slightly off-duty day and, uh, yesterday. Houston, this is uh, Houston Flight. Uh, I just want to say that it was a good but The crew has been uh, working this morning on a number of different uh, experiments and uh, other maintenance activities on board. Oleg Kononenko started his day working on a Russian experiment that uh, studies the veins in the lower extremities down in the astronauts and cosmonauts' legs. As we talk about quite a bit on here, the uh, human body is an area of uh, intense focus for the ground teams and researchers that try to find out how we react to being up in space. The uh, crew, specifically Conan Yanko and uh, Andre Kuypers and Don Pettit, also uh, checked out their Soyuz. It's going to be bringing them home here in just a couple of weeks. They got in their Soyuz seat liners, which are custom made for each one of them, to make sure that they still fit and are okay to support the landing. The human body actually gets a little bit taller uh, in space, especially whenever you're up there for about six months. So each of the crews checks out their seats and uh, measures everything and just makes sure that they're still uh, good to go to support. Uh, the upcoming landing. Konanyenko, Kuypers, and Don Pettit are going to be landing coming up on Sunday, July 1st, around 3.15 a.m. Central Time. Of course, we'll have live coverage here on NASA television. Gennady Padalka worked inside the Russian segment on an electromagnetic experiment called Kulinovsky Crystal. The basic examination of this is to look at the electrostatic interaction between electrically charged particles. So he worked on that and reported those results down to the ground teams. Padalka, as well as Sergey Revin, also worked together on an education experiment that looks at the complete gas to liquid phase separation of fine dispersion particles up there in space. Joe Acaba also reviewed procedures for the upcoming test of the amine swing bed. This is a new prototype for the carbon dioxide removal system that will be used on the Orion spacecraft coming up in the future. The point of this is to test out brand new technology on that amine swing bed that uh, basically makes it more efficient and much smaller than what is currently up on board the International Space Station. Throughout the years, these carbon dioxide removal assemblies have gotten smaller and uh, worked a bit better and more efficient. Of course, Orion does not uh, have the space of the International Space Station and will be going on much longer journeys, so smaller is better, and uh, the space station is the perfect place to test out that technology uh, coming up here in the future. The cop also had a hand pass with St. Anne's Primary School near Sydney, Australia. He talked with some elementary and middle school student, students about uh, life on board the station to find out what it's like to work on board the orbiting complex. And uh, the students asked him uh, what kind of food that the crew eats and uh, what they do every day. He also worked on the capillary flow experiment that looks at how liquids and solids interact in zero G. That's an ongoing experiment that has been conducted throughout several expeditions. Andre Kuypers worked on some of the water on-off valves in the Columbus Laboratory. You're seeing some footage of that from earlier today. That activity took up the majority of his morning. Later on today, he's also going to work on the integrated cardiovascular ambulatory monitoring experiment, which is uh, something that he's done all week long. This takes a look at how the cardiovascular system reacts to being up in space. As we talked about, the human body is uh, one of the main experiments on board. So that uh, experiment has been monitoring his blood pressure throughout the week, as well as uh, some EKG signals, much like you would find in a doctor's office here on Earth. Don Pettit worked on a rack called the Multipurpose Small Payload Rack. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's in the Kibo Laboratory. It has two different workspaces and one workbench and can hold all kinds of equipment, supplies, and uh, power for the experiments that take place in that rack. There's also a way for that rack to be communicated uh, directly with the ground, and there's some uh, video equipment on board so the ground teams can monitor uh, the experiments on board. But it's basically a plug-and-play rack, so anything that uh, needs to go in there can. And he was uh, doing some routine maintenance on the quick disconnects that are part of the combustion chamber there. 
And then earlier today, the entire crew, which you're hearing a debrief of now, conducted a routine fire drill on board. This happens uh, periodically on board where they simulate what would happen uh, if a fire occurred. There's three different main emergencies that the crew does train and focus for, fire being one of them, uh, toxicity or some sort of uh, toxic uh, chemical release is another one, and of course depressurization is the uh, third and final one. So what they do is they uh, reenact what would happen if a fire actually occurred on board. They uh, don their masks and their safety devices and the uh, ground teams work with them. And then what they do is they have a quick chat with the ground teams uh, here in Houston that you're hearing now to talk about uh, how it went and to suggest improvements for the future.